Welcome back to Daily Stand Up. I think it's been about a month, I think, since the last video. Um, this one is just going to be basically recapping where we left off on the engines project. And basically, it's kind of a slight uh, change in direction as to where I want this to go. And a couple things that I've kind of been learning uh, along the way. One thing is going to be um, so I'm reading this book. It's called Design Elixir Systems with OTP. Uh, and it's basically this talking about this functional programming language called Elixir. Uh, and it's got some really good concepts in there. One of them is for um, basically for the data structure to kind of uh, dictate the, the code more or less and, and how the design is, is created. And that's kind of the philosophy I want to apply to this project in terms of, you know, okay, what data structure are we actually working with? So in this context, it's going to be the engine's... Um, model uh, basically that we're kind of we're kind of using and we've seen it now uh, pass from my um, endpoints uh, or from my front end through the API gateway to my back end data pipeline um, and I like to continue um, doing that basically but I want to add in a another microservice using one of these uh, functional programming languages I don't know if it's going to be elixir or if it's going to be rust uh, go, whatever it is, I think I'm leaning towards Rust, to be honest with you. Uh, and I think I'll be able to do this, uh, like, I think I'll be able to do this because I've already created my RabbitMQ message uh, broker, or basically that's already in place. So I should be able to code a microservice in Rust and consume messages from that uh, queue. So I think I should be able to basically create a Rust microservice that handles concurrent processing of my engine's data. And I just want to see how that performs. Uh, basically, because I've already created... I'll tell you what, let me... Um, can I move my window? Let me, okay, I'm going to move this down here. So this, again, is my back end, or part of one of my back ends. This is the engine's API. So basically my front end calls this API and it sends uh, an engine model to this, this endpoint. And obviously you've seen it since the last video. This is obviously in the heavy, heavy prototyping phase. But uh, right here I'm um, sending the message or publishing the message to my RabbitMQ um, message broker that's running locally whenever I stand this application up. So if I were to go to, um, do I have this running in Docker yet? I can't even remember. I might not have created the Docker file yet. Uh, I don't think I did, to be honest with you. Maybe it's in my front end app. Let me see. Where I left off last time was adding the migration scripts on my front end, uh, basically to set up the tables whenever this launches. And I think if I remember right, let's look at the YAML. Yeah, so I have this one setting up the RabbitMQ uh, broker on the ports and then establishing the um, the network for that uh, as well as running um, this Docker image uh, for the front end. Okay, yeah, I guess I don't think I have that set up yet for my Engines API backend. Um, but yeah, basically, so this uh, is one way to publish... This is this is going to be publishing the messages that are sent from my front end. Uh, on the consuming side, originally I was going to have... Um, well, I'm going to add this in as a prototype. So let's do that right now. So if I go into my uh, prototype 2 ticket here, extend prototype 1 and build further back-end design. Um, I've already kind of been doing that. So I, I'm going to add a new ticket actually to this um, that's going to be in progress. Um, and this is going to be prototype um, backend uh, consumer. And I'm going to have this number one. So this one is going to be my Rust application. So remember what, why, and done when. So my what is uh, prototype a Rust microservice to consume there we go to consume uh, messages published to my rabbit MQ uh, 
Q. <laughs> I'll just call it that. Uh, does that make sense? Okay, so basically this is going to be, I'm thinking, responsible for uh, concurrent um, message processing of my engine data model. One goal I have and why I'm looking at Rust in general is because of the speed uh, and the ease of use for working with uh, immutable data structures, which my engine's uh, data model uh, I plan to leave uh, as, as to be immutable. I don't want anything changing or manipulating any of those values coming from my engine simulator making its way to the back end. So the functional languages are based on a lot of languages from the 80s like Erlang and things like that that were made basically as, as pretty much business uh, level languages that are that were used to scale out like stock market applications, financial systems, and everything like that. So these new languages that are kind of like trendy or whatever, Rust, Go, whatever, they're kind of based on principles established from there. So my goal is to use Rust uh, to create a really, really fast processor of all this data. And I want to, my goal is I want to send first, I want to be able to send uh, one million messages a minute. So that's one goal. And honestly, I want to get to, I want to get, I want to scale that out to tens of millions, hundreds of millions, um, and for, and further from that. I know it's going to take a lot of work, and I know it's going to take a lot of kind of manipulating how my data is structured and how my microservices are structured. And obviously, the glaring issue with this whole thing is that I'm limited to my single host machine, so that's going to be uh, the biggest, you know, inhibitor to testing these things fully. But I'm not planning on spending any money on any kind of infrastructure so uh, I'm just going to be using this so we'll see how far we can get with this and we'll see what the limitations are but I'm going to have I'm going to create rust to hopefully um, get us to that that goal of 1 million messages a minute uh, which is pretty good I think I, I think I think that should be pretty good I, I plan on making that a lot more but we'll, we'll see how far we get so why we need a fast message We need a fast message processor. That's really about it. Done when working. Prototype written in Rust. A couple things. Uh, I've never done anything in Rust. I've the, the closest that I've done with that form of functional language is I've worked with F Sharp a little bit uh, in their mailbox processors, which basically is a uh, concurrent message processor that uh, does stuff I don't know I didn't really get super far with it but I've used F sharp a little bit and that's really the kind of limitation of like my exclusively you know functional programming language obviously C sharp has a lot of new features that are being added that are heavily you know if not just copied from F sharp you know heavily inspired by F sharp features so Rust is going to be a bit of a learning curve. I plan on using ChatGPT where I can just to help me kind of spec out some templates and stuff. To full transparency, I plan on just I plan on getting started by asking ChatGPT to write me a Rust uh, service that can handle, you know, I'll give it my data structure that can handle, you know, uh, doing something with the data structure. I haven't I haven't got there yet. Um, that's Pretty probably how I'm gonna start. I have a couple books from the library coming in. I think um, that should be here maybe next week or so. Uh, so that should get me started at least, and I think that should give me a good kind of base to work on. So I think that I'm good with that. Oh, we gotta estimate it. Hold on. This one I'm probably gonna point to a five because there's a lot of there's this pretty steep learning curve for me, and I have to one research. Oh, I should probably, hold on, I'm going to capture this. Uh, research how to connect to my RabbitMQ service. So I already have one running locally, and I need to learn how I can code a Rust application to connect and receive messages from that service. It should work because that's the whole right. That's the whole idea of these message brokers right, and microservices is that it shouldn't matter what language we use. So that's really like, do I need to use Rust? No, not really. But 
I like to try as many languages as I can to see what works and what doesn't and just to get a feel for working in a lot of different things. Uh, and Rust and, and uh, Elixir, if anyone's worked in Elixir, uh, they're becoming increasingly popular. I've, I saw an article the other day. It was like, I think Microsoft potentially maybe moving their, some of their C++ back end over to Rust or rewriting it. I don't know. I didn't read it too much. But if that's true, then we might see a lot more Rust in programming jobs or functional programming jobs come into the market, um, which could be really interesting because those languages, I think, do a lot of things right that object-oriented languages do a lot of things right. Uh, wrong to be to be completely honest I, I think object oriented has a lot of advantages but it can get very verbose very quickly whereas functional languages if you can kind of get around the syntax curve um, they can do a lot in a lot more kind of succinct you know syntax which has its I, I understand has its trade-offs and has its you know it's, it's not the greatest and it, sometimes it's not as readable but Sometimes implementing a very small feature in an object-oriented world it, with design patterns established two decades ago can take a lot, a lot of code. And there's a lot of kind of thinking behind these design patterns and philosophy behind them. And they're all very good, but sometimes uh, it's good to learn both maybe the object-oriented and the functional world just to help you formulate your own ideas and thoughts and hopefully experiment to figure out maybe there's a better way to do things. And that's what I'm hoping to do with this project. And uh, I think we are all good. Again, this is kind of where I'm at, though. Um, go back and watch the previous videos of this series if you want to see the code working and where we're at with uh, the prototype. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for this one. And so we are going to be actively working on the uh, back-end consumer one. And let me actually take a look at... Okay, back-end design to... I think it might have been a copy. Build a prototype of a queue to handle messages. Solution. Okay. What I still need to do. To be honest, guys, I might actually done this ticket here because this is kind of getting a little uh, stale. So I'm gonna put, I'll move that to done because I think we actually created our functional prototype, right, of of RabbitMQ publishing and receiving, just to help kind of clean up the in progress stuff. Um, my main focus is gonna be Rust, though, trying to get that Rust, Rust microservice up and running so I'm actually going to slide this one back into my planning column because I have to I, I think I need to do more planning around that and now that, that way I'm only working on one thing and it'll be easier to kind of report on progress on this so anyway that's it for this one and I'll see you on the next one